Here we have a 2000 Subaru Forester wiring harness. Uh, here's the computer here and all of the, basically um, everything that this wiring harness is connected to. Got the fuse panel there and uh, if we come over here we can actually see the second harness. This is the uh, engine harness for the headlights. Uh, there's the relay box. Um, this is the connection we're concerned with. It's the um, alternator and air conditioning. And uh, basically, we're just going to go through peeling this thing apart and getting it ready for a 2.5 liter engine going into a Vanagon. So that's up next. The um, harness that goes uh, in the engine, so this is the fuse or the relay box. Um, most of it we're not going to use. Um, so really the only piece we're going to use is this guy right here. This is the um, alternator and uh, air conditioning bracket or uh, connectors. So I'm just going to find uh, the beginning of it right here. Snip it off and uh, you know some of the control wires um, probably going to this bundle. So I'm going to take this apart and just double check. But I'm just going to lop it off right there, probably, and uh, call it good. Out of all this harness here, the only piece we're going to use is this guy. Crazy, huh? Anyway, off to the uh, main harness. Here we have the main harness, here's the computer, and uh, if we follow it out, uh, we'll see that it actually goes into two grommets here. And these actually go into the engine bay and connect up to the engine. So these are very important. We need to keep these um, basically untouched. Uh, we may have to cut a few and solder, but um, we're not gonna, hopefully not gonna have to mess with it too much. Okay, and then we follow along the path here, and a lot of this stuff we're not going to end up keeping. Um, most of this, you know, goes to connectors that we're not worried about. Come up here, this tucks underneath the dash, and, uh, you know, like all this stuff, this is all for like the heater and AC, stuff like that. Um, but, a couple things to be concerned with is we have the OBD2 connector here. So we definitely want to keep that. And we also have the relays for fuel, this guy with the green connector. And we have the main ignition relay, this brown guy. So um, all these other relays, they control other stuff, so we're not too concerned with it. But what we're going to do is um, uh, take the pin out for the ECU, find everything that we don't need, trim that off, and then make sure that all the stuff that we do need is connected. So that's kind of the process, and uh, I'm gonna try and um, try and show you how to do that. It's gonna be tough with a video, but um, try my best. Um, the wiring harness is unpeeled and. Um, Basically, I'm just locating wires that I'm going to run to the dash and uh, any critical wires that are at the end of the wiring harness here, like the OBD2 sensor or uh, port and um, the fuel pump and the main ignition relay. And then all this other stuff. We're just going to cut this stuff off and uh, kind of work it out of the harness. So it's kind of hard to document that, but basically, you know, for this one, for example, uh, what we would do, or what I do, is try and weed it out as much as I can down the line, you know, try and pull the wire out. If it tees or goes into another connector, I'll snip that and then just keep trying to work it out. Um, that's that's basically the process. You locate on the on the input output diagram or chart which ones are absolutely essential. So you know, like a lot of these are essential. Like for example, idle air control valve. Um, basically, that's gonna that's gonna go into these 
main wiring harnesses that go to the engine. Um, so we don't need to worry about these. As long as we keep these clean and don't snip any wires from these guys, we'll be, we'll be good. But stuff like this, I mean, who knows? This could go to the heater blower. I mean, it, you know, it's hard to say. I didn't pull this harness, and um, a lot of it is, you know, labeled well, but, you know, the labels don't really mean anything to me. So, stuff like this, we're just going to snip off and work it out of the harness. So, here we are cleaned up a little bit. Um, this bunch is going to basically dash, things like that. Some wires are clipped off, and uh, if we follow the, the bundle, we've got uh, the main engine harness here. This goes out to the engine, and you know, just a bunch of stuff that I need to wrap up. Like this is uh, ignition on, battery powered. Um, and then we come back over here, and we have the diagnostic connectors. Um, grounds, mission relay, fuel pump relay, OBD2, and uh, you know stuff like this just needs to get wrapped up. Uh, this is the fuel pump, so that's going from the fuel pump relay to the fuel pump. So um, that's kind of where we are right now, and I'm just going to double check all the pinouts, make sure I didn't miss anything, and then we're going to wrap up the harness, and uh, it's going to go into a van again. Here's the mostly completed uh, harness. Um, so basically we have the engine connectors. These are the O2 uh, sensor connectors here. Those will connect on the uh, driver's side of the engine in the van again. And then these go to the um, black box on the firewall. And uh, basically it just comes in a big bundle. Out here we have the diagnostic connectors, we have the um, main relay, fuel pump relay, OBD2 port, and the ECU. And uh, this is going to get tucked up underneath the Westphalia cabinets. So kind of that weird unus uh, unused space, at least I can never really find a perfect way to use that other than storing my Bentley. But uh, anyway, we're going to mount that in that location and then shoot through the side wall of that cabinet and then head down and then out and then up to the uh, to the actual uh, black box area where we make all our interconnections. Okay, next up I uh, took the dash apart and revealed the connection for the gauges and what we need to do is actually locate this wire on this uh, van. It's uh, yellow red and we need to splice in a, a resistor in line so that the gauge will read um, more accurately. So um, anything around 20 ohm resistance will work and this guy right here is a uh, 22 ohm resistor. Okay, we have the resistor uh, soldered in and I always like to put like a supporting um, piece of wire uh, in with the heat shrink so that it can kind of uh, bear some of the mechanical burden. And now we're just, uh, I'm going to tape this up so that it's a little more protected and then we're ready to put the dash back together. So I did the final taping on the um, ECU wiring harness after I got the engine running. Um, I apologize, this video might seem a little disjointed because the, um, the engine's in <laughs> and this video um, is airing before I actually show the install of the engine. So, um, kind of funky, but that's okay. Uh, I figured the wiring harness should, uh, the video should be um, kind of all inclusive. So, here we have the wiring harness. It's not permanently mounted, it's just kind of sitting in here. But um, but that's okay for now. And then I uh, did the final wrap, and it kind of swings around under here and connects up to the box here. I mounted a little check engine light, just because it's always going to be on um, with a Subaru swap into a VW. Um, 
I mounted the um, uh, barometric pressure sensor there and um, basically we're good to go this this engine runs in fact I've been driving it around and uh, the harness is complete so thanks again for watching I know it was a little disjointed but um, hopefully this wiring harness video will uh, shed a little more light into um, how to build one and um, in the description I'm also going to post some links to the ECU pinouts so if you're doing a um, OBD2 um, computer um, that would be really helpful because you'll be able to eliminate things like uh, fuel pressure sensor, fuel tank pressure, uh, you know, just stuff like that, that that just doesn't translate over to the VW. So um, feel free to comment and let me know if you have any questions on that. I'm really happy to help. Um, it seems at like an intimidating job, but really just take your time and it's it's actually kind of enjoyable. And I've uh, actually really been enjoying the OBD2 um, computers that I've been doing as the OBD1s become more and more scarce. Um, the OBD2s are, are fine and you can use um, great iPhone or Android apps to run digital gauges, which is super sweet. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.